A Fresh Perspective with Vicki Fitch. This week, Vicki interviews Stacy Lynn Hart. Now here's your host, Vicki Fitch. Everybody, Vicki Fitch here, your direct sales expert and the host of Vicki Fitch Live, A Fresh Perspective. If you guys have been watching the show for very long, you know the first Wednesday of every month, I have the Evict the Bully in Your Head series. I have a new book coming out uh, shortly that is called Evict the Bully in Your Head, and it's all about the bullies in our head, the things that start out and tell us we're not good enough, strong enough, smart enough, or uh, are just spectacular enough, right? That we're just not enough. And so we have people that come on the first Wednesday of every month that explain to us their trials, their tragedies, and how they've turned them into triumph. So I just really am excited about my guest today. And I'm going to, you probably have seen the promos that have gone out, but I'm going to explain to you and just tell you a little bit about my guest. Um, first of all, her name is Stacy Lynn Harp from Bible News Radio. She is an author. She is a clinical psychologist. She, I think, I might be getting her words wrong. I think she's, yeah, she's, she has a degree in clinical psychology. She is an amazing, she's your sweet and lovable host of Bible News Radio, and she's also a pickleball enthusiast. So we have lots of stuff to share with you tonight. So I hope you got your tissues ready. I hope you got some water and some popcorn because you are not going to want to move. So I'm going to introduce my special guest today, Miss Stacy Lynn Harp. Stacy, welcome. Hi. You're not on yet. You're coming. There you are. <laughs> Hi, Stacy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am excellent. Thanks so much for asking. I'm so blessed to have you here. You know, I try and give you this little fun intro, but the fact is that you and I have known each other. We've actually got to meet each other at Periscope Summit. And, um, you know, I hear that you, you and Randall are also coming to Summit Live here in LA. So it's going to be another exciting time. And we have a lot of stuff to discuss. I'm just so grateful that you agreed to come on and share your story with the audience and, and um, you know, just give them a little glimpse inside of, of who Stacy Lynn is. Um, you know, the sweet and lovable host part, right? Is that part of your little catchphrase is being sweet and lovable. So I'm going to just kind of dive in really quick and ask you my question of the day. Okay. Um, the question of the day, what I usually find out for you is like, what was your favorite job and why? Except I should switch it around since I heard you got a little preview of my questions. Hey. You can ask me a different question. That's all right. Go ahead. What is my, that's actually a very good question. I've, I've had a couple of really cool jobs in my life. Um, I, I would say one of my favorite jobs was when I worked at Castle Park Golf and Fun, mm. uh, which, which was actually one of the very first jobs I, I had when I lived in Riverside, California. I actually was... Uh, there when they opened up when they I was the, one of the very first people to ever ride on the rides in the theme park there wow so it was that long ago I was one of the first people to get out of the orange and brown polyester outfits that they had and they put us in white and black pants with red uh you know things down there and I actually had my gal I actually still have my my satin castle park golf and fun jacket which i can have randall go get if you want to see it later oh my gosh that so reminds me the <laughs> satin jacket talk about a total flashback that is hilarious <laughs> and i want to tell you guys i'm trying really hard to um to see the comments here but for some reason i cannot have them my 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 ipad still says so that it's we're coming soon so i don't know what's going on so Sam, if you have any possibility of throwing those comments up there for me so I can read them, I'd really appreciate it. Um, you know, we're going to, we have uh, something, normally right now we kind of do the little rock star of the week thing, but since, um, you know, there's an opportunity here for us to dive in since you did know that question, I'm going to throw you another one. What do you guys think? Should I throw our curveball question? Let's see. I know it's so hard. Okay, so Stacy, what's the most embarrassing moment you've ever had? It's the most embarrassing moment. That's a good question. Um, hmm. <laughs> How do you answer that question? Uh, um, the truth I, is good. The truth well, is good. I, I guess, I don't know, in terms of feeling embarrassed in front of people, um, I can't really ever think of anything like like public, but I would say, one of the one of the times that I felt really embarrassed was when I interviewed Amy Grant on my show uh, because I was brand new to doing interviews and I got this big huge long uh, introduction bio that I I literally read the whole thing. Uh -oh. <laughs> she 
mm. minutes. And anyway, long story short, at, at the end of it, she asked me, um, she's, she's like, are you going to ask me a question? And I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> I can see where that might be a little yeah, embarrassing, you know, right? It was kind of embarrassing, yeah. So that, I would say that's probably one of my most embarrassing moments was here I am with Amy Grant, of all people, and I'm like flopping over my words, not knowing what to do. And well, I think that kind of stuff makes for really good stories, right? And that gives other people hope that, hey, you can stumble through and you can still be a rock star in the the, the, the um. Uh, radio industry for sure. So let's just take a quick sidebar really quick and talk and just tell people because we're going to dive into some really deep stuff here. And so I want to just do a quick thing. You guys know that I believe in community and I believe that we should all be there to support each other. And I have a, an entrepreneurial rock stars group. As a matter of fact, Stacy is involved in that. And we have a rock star of the week that comes in, not on the Evict the Bully in Your Head series, but on every other time we have somebody that comes in. So I'd love for you guys to join the entrepreneurial rock stars, put your information in there so we can have you do a cameo appearance and give you some uh, street cred, some you'll get some SEO because we'll be putting it on YouTube as well as here on Facebook Live. We tweet it out incessantly. So you guys, I would love for you guys to join our group. Go to Vicky Fitch or go to Facebook.com. Actually, just go to VickyFitch.com slash freebies. That's the easiest way to get in so you don't have to spell the word entrepreneurial. And I believe that it's underneath. Um, it's on a little uh, lower third there. So you can see it says VickyFitch.com slash freebies. So join us and let us support you and your business ventures. So now let's get back to Miss Stacy Lynn Hart. So Stacy, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. First of all, I mean, you have a pretty amazing story. You are a licensed therapist, right? And so you're, you're not a licensed, you're a therapist, you're something. Well, give us the scoop. You're shaking your head no, but I know you're, you do family and marriage, you've done family and marriage counseling. So why don't you share with us your situation? Yeah, my background, I'm a clinically trained marriage and family therapist. Um, okay with a master's degree in clinical psychology, master's of science degree in clinical psychology. I graduated in 2005 with that after taking 13 years to get through college and another five to earn 3,000 hours that it took to get my internship uh, completed in California to be a marriage and family therapist. So I'm not licensed and that's by choice and for a couple of reasons, which um, I'm not really gonna go into, but. Uh, but I will say that I don't regret anything that I did there. And uh, I ha I, if I hadn't ever gone through college and graduate school, then I would not definitely be the person I am today. So I know I can understand why you got a little bit confused because I, I always say I'm a clinically trained marriage and family therapist instead of saying licensed because I'm not licensed. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. And so I apologize that I inaccurately described <laughs> that. But the fact is that, that you do have a lot of experience, just not only through your training, but also through the opportunity to, um, you know, speak with people, even counseling people, you know, we're not required to like, I, I mean, I help counsel people sometimes, right? I'm not required to have that license, but that experience that we get from, you know, helping and, and really engaging with other people is, is kind of an amazing thing. And so, um, you know, what would you say to people that are looking at going into um, an industry like that? Do you, do you have some advice to give them of, you know, something that might, how they could make a difference in the world? Um, I would definitely tell them, depending on whether or not they're a Christian or not, I would, I would counsel them probably differently if they're a believer as opposed to a non-believer. Um, but I would also say, hey, you know, if you, if you really love people and you want to help people, uh, this is a good field to go into. But at the same time, I would say it's not all glory. There's tons of paperwork and it's not just sitting in a chair. People always think that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And I would also say, just to be blunt and honest, I would say if you're going to be a therapist, you need to do your own work. You need to get into your own therapy. You need to work through your issues and, and stop making your clients your, your, your unpaid therapist. Uh, because unfortunately, most and I, I and I it's true. Unfortunately, most people who go into this field they don't they don't deal with their issues, and and that's a tragedy because mm -hmm. people get hurt in therapy. And I actually was one of those people. Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of my story too. Yeah, and well, you know, and that's that's the thing I think is that when we look at the things, you know, you've had a lot of things, and we're going to kind of start to venture in there. But besides the fact that. Um, you know, it, it took you a while to get through school, right? And, and we, we found out later, or you found out later, it's because you have some learning disabilities. And you know that I have a son with a lot of learning disabilities, and I'm an, a, a big advocate that, um, you know, that can put 
put information in people's hands and we try and help people to understand. And I always, you know, I have another book after Evict the Bull in Your Head coming out called Own It, How to Step Up and Stand Out. And part of that is because of my son, because of learning disabilities, because of, you know, quirkiness or different things that we have going, that we want to make sure that people embrace those things and don't feel like they're weird or odd or different, that they actually just have the opportunity. And really quick, oh, Joyce is in the house, Mia, Krista, Stoney, Relentless Raymond here, Zach, Melanie, Vicki, Tracy, Cassie. Finally, we can see some comments. You guys are rock stars. Thank you so much for being here. Would you guys do us a favor and share this out? Again, you probably already have, you know, but if you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate it. We want to make sure a lot of people get to hear this message of hope that Stacy's about to deliver. So Stacy, why don't you share with us a little bit about your learning disabilities, the situations that you've had come up? Well, you know, um, I would, I would say this, I would say, um, it began when I was a kid, when I was really little, I, I ended up having to go through, uh, uh, speech therapy and believe it or not, I had uh, a speech problem when I was really young and that always made me feel very weird and, and awkward. I always felt like an outcast. I really did. Um, and, and, but I always excelled in school too. I never felt like I really fit very well, but I, I excelled really good. I have probably a higher IQ than the average and, um, which isn't unusual as you know, with people who have learning disabilities, but where it really, really started to, um, impact me was actually when I got in college and, uh, there was a point when I was in college where the, the stress of just my life and the different things that I was going through was so, so bad that they literally, the college put me into the disabled students uh, category. And so I actually had, uh, aid from the state, it was on SSI, it was on disability. <laughs> I mean, literally they, you know, I look back at it and I think it's crazy that I got through school, you know, with all the stress that I did. And I had one teacher who was um, absolutely wonderful in college. Her name was Marianne Larson. And she was, I, I remember she was um, my very first psychology teacher. And I really, really super wanted to give up mm -hmm. in college. And uh, I was getting the worst score possible. And she, she ran a brain test on us uh, students because she was working on her, uh, her psychology degree, her, her doctorate. And she came back to me in private. And she said, I wanna let you know that your score is worse than almost everybody else's because you have, you, you, and she basically told me I had brain damage, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of like, really, ouch. you know, like, ouch. But, <laughs> and, and so I told her, I was like, okay, like, and, and, and eventually I kind of wanted to, I wanted to give up. And at that point I was, it was like literally my first or second semester of college. I was even, I didn't even have my associate's degree yet. Mm -hmm. And I went to her and I said, you know what, I'm just going to take it incomplete in this class. I give up. Mm -hmm. And Marianne, she, she pulled me aside and she said, no. And I said, well, how come? And she said, because I know you really want this that bad. Mm. Yeah, that woman changed my life. Well, you know, Stacy, as you, you know, bring that in, it does bring us to tears, right? And that's, that's part of this, this story, you know, is, and by the way, thank you to Blake is here and, and Brian Fanzo's in the house, Juana's here. There's a lot of people here to support you, Stacy, and, you know, to Michael is here, Jen Hoverstad's here, you know, we, yeah, and, and Relentless Raymond says never give up because, you know, that's the bully in our head, right? That's why we, we do this series. That's why I wrote the book, Evict the Bully in Your Head, because something inside you was telling you weren't good enough, that you're not good enough, and you're not going to do it. I'm just going to, it's, it's easier to just give up, but this is the, the beauty, right? Is that someone chose to step up. Someone chose to say, no, Stacy, I believe in you. No, Stacy, let me, let me find out what's troubling you. What is it that's causing you to have difficulties here? Somebody spent the time to invest in you and figure out what was going on. And when they did that, then it opened up and look at you now. You have taken on this path to start sharing with other people, start helping other people, start embracing that. And the fact that you were willing to share the learning disabilities portion with other people. And thank you, Tracy. She, they said they love you, Stacy. Tracy um, said she loves you. Vicki is here. And she said she's so glad she, that you listened, Stacy. So people are really pouring out some, some passion for you as a person, not just, you know, as a, um, 
you know, as somebody that's being interviewed here. So, you know, as we take that, you know, and Joy said she can so relate to your story. So that's the surface, right? I mean, we take that surface and um, Jen Hoverstead says you're awesome and she's so glad that you're sharing your story. And so again, keep that in mind as we start to tackle some things that are a little more, you know, a little more challenging. And, and I know everybody in the audience here is going to be kind and compassionate. I know there will be absolutely no one making inappropriate remarks, jokes. If you think it could possibly be inappropriate or not funny, please don't post it. Okay. Please don't post it because this is a really tender thing that we're about to talk about. So, you know, Stacy, and I thank you for trusting me enough to, um, to, sh to share this story because I know that it's, um, you know, it's challenging and thank you for being here, Tim. I know that it's challenging, but as we look at that and, you know, you have a, a background of sexual abuse and, and, you know, rather than kind of skirting around it, we want to talk about it because it can't be the elephant in the room and still help other people. The only way we can help is that we actually share it, that we talk about it, how you, again, you came through such a, a, a challenging thing and you have become victorious in it. And so, you know, I, I would love for you to start sharing where this, this difficulty started and how those bullies started uh, attacking you in your head, what, you know, what, what those feelings were. And so we can kind of help other people to understand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is true. Um, did we lose your audio, Stacy? Stacy, I think we. Mm. Oh, there you go. Okay, no. you're back. Go ahead. No, I'm good. I'm back. <laughs> oh, I was. I was just going to say thank you for you know asking me about this. You know, I've shared my story on my own show, but I've never actually shared it with an audience that like been interviewed about it. Um, and I will say that I was five years old when my great uncle, who my husband refers to as my mother's uncle, because it really was my mother's uncle, um, came into my life. And he was uh, about, I'd say at least 40, 40 years older than, uh, he was quite old, actually. Um, and he lived in California, and I lived in New York with my mom and my dad, who were still married at that point. And, you know, I look back and I go, the first incident was basically him, you know, sitting, having me sit on his lap and, and have me touch him when he, he had a, you know, he was erect, you know, as a five-year-old. But I also had short hair and very short hair because my mom said that she wished I was never born and she always wanted a boy. Uh, and she had two boys as it was. She had me and my, she had uh, my brothers and I was in the middle, I was the girl. So she didn't like the fact that I was a girl. And she had an affair with my, with her uncle, this, this uncle that molested me. And when I was seven, um, she left my father and took me and my brothers to California. And we started to live with him, which at that point was when my uncle began to molest me on a daily basis. And he was so sinister that um, he, he would, he did like rituals with me at first. He, you know, he would, he took me in the shower and he married us. And that messed with my head for quite some time. Um, he did, he did pretty much everything that you could do to a kid, uh, in, including taking pictures of me and, uh, marking things on the calendar, documenting every time he molested me. Um, and my mom knew about it. And I found out years after the fact uh, that she had told people and she never told the cops, she never stopped it. Um, but those, those were really hard years because I lost my dad in an instant and I didn't grow up with him. Um, and my mom didn't want me and handed me over to her uncle to be molested and while she was actually sleeping with him. So that's a uh, part of it. Well, and, and, you know, if the, the outrage that people are feeling, and first of all, I just want to, you know, extend to you. I'm so sorry that that ever happened to you. And I know that you know that because we've talked personally, mm -hmm. but my heart hurts, you know, and, and Vicki is saying, you know, that they're so sad. You're so young and innocent and it's heartbreaking. And it is right. And we have to protect children. We have to protect people. We've got to stop predators. And that's why you sharing is going to make a difference because it is starting to create bullies in other people's heads. But, you know, you know, Jen Hoverside says, you know, you're so strong and Nikki Ramos is in the house and, you know, your, your courage to share this 
is going to to have a ripple effect. You know that the people here, uh, I know that they're sharing out. I mean, I know that they're sharing this content out. I know they're going to share it out when it's on YouTube because we have to get the word out. And the fact that you're willing to share is a huge difference. The, the, the fact that your mother betrayed you, I know that has to break your heart. I know being a child put in a situation where someone's taken advantage of you. And like you said, has indoctrinated you to say we're married and, you know, and we don't understand what's going on. So, you know, as, as this started to come to light, Stacy, what, what transpired? Cause I, I mean, I know that this goes into, you know, areas that get really uncomfortable. And so at any time, if you don't want to talk about it anymore, you just let me know and we will definitely move on. Cause we do have other topics to talk about before the end of the night, but we wanted to, to get this one through so we can bring it up on that, the high note, you know, as we start to share how, your life has changed, but, but fill in some more of the blanks for them. Well, I would say, um, you know, the abuse went on for a long time. My mom got remarried uh, a couple years after living with my uncle and, um, and we still lived in the apartments really close to my uncle. So he was able, he was, he was able to molest me at, at one point. And I was probably about 10 or 11 at the time, but he, um, uh, I started to fight back. I, I started to run away from him. And then he began to get violent with me and, you know, it hit me. And I remember one time in particular, he knocked, I mean, he punched me in the gut out in the public, which nobody would ever dream of actually hitting a kid in the public. But he was so blatantly evil that it didn't matter whenever he wanted to be masturbated that, you know, I was his object. Um, and he had a sinister plan to, to vaginally rape me on my 16th birthday. And um, I have to tell you that, you know, he sodomized me for most of my childhood. And fortunately, he never got to vaginally rape me uh, because when I was um, 14 years old, uh, I, I went, I was in high school at that point. And um, I have to tell you that my mom had gotten remarried for the third time by the time I was in high school. Um, so after I had lived in, I, I went to four elementary schools, went to uh, two junior highs. And then by this time I was in high school and my goal was to make a friend because obviously I didn't really have any friends and pedophiles tend to hunt people down. You know, they isolate needy people, right? I mean, that's what they do. They target people who, who want love and, and my uncle knew how to give me what I wanted. I mean, he, and that's where it, it's very confusing for survivors is because on the one hand, they're doing stuff to you that makes you feel really good on some level, but then sometimes they get violent. And so, but then they'll give you gifts. And my uncle totally gave me gifts all the time. Um, but by the time I was in high school, my mom had remarried again to an, a, an, another alcoholic after getting divorced to the second guy. And I thought, you know, I'm in a new school. I want to meet, make some friends. So I think I'll join choir. And so I joined choir because I love to sing. And my mom fought me on that and didn't want me in choir. And I'm just like, this is ridiculous. But I, I was like, no, I'm going to do it. So I went to it. And in there, I met a girl named Gail, who I became friends with, who started sharing with me the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it was at that time when Gail told me, that God loved me, that I all of a sudden in my mind knew that I had to tell somebody what was going on with my uncle. Mm -hmm. Because all that time there, it was going on and he documented the whole thing. So a short time after that, um, as God would have it, the next door neighbors who lived next door to me, they moved and a new family moved in. It was a Filipino family uh, who were Christians. And they just happened to have kids my age and my brother's age. And they invited me to go to church which my mom wouldn't let me go to. And eventually though, she did let me go. And when I got there, I told somebody, I, I told the pastor actually. And I said, you know, I'm being, I'm being sexually abused. Can you help me? And the pastor said, no, go to school, tell your high school. So, you know, when I think about it now, it really pisses me off that I went to the church and they wouldn't help me. And the irony of it all in my life is that I'm a vocal, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm very affiliated with quote the church, you know? So, well, well 
and again, it, it makes perfect sense, right? I mean, you know, the fallen people here on earth that make uh, unbelievable mistakes because that, I mean, it makes me sick to my stomach, obviously. And, you know, it, it, it saddens me that we're so worried about what the repercussions might be of us telling someone, you, you tell, and you try and, okay, I'm going to give this to an adult. I'm a child. I'm going to hand this to an adult. And the adult's like, mm, not, I, you know, I'm not going to get my hands dirty. I, I'm, let you go, go tell your school. Let's, let's pass that buck to someone else. And, and it's horrific and it's awful. And, and again, the fact that it happened to you, Stacy, you and I both know is a tragedy, but it also has turned you into the strong, you know, courageous, truly courageous woman that you are today. You have given hope to so many people because you refuse to give up. You refuse to give it into that bully. You continually remind that bully to go away that, you know what? Not today, not today, because today I'm going to share something with someone and I'm going to make a difference today. I'm going to encourage a child. I'm going to encourage someone that's struggling. I'm going to, I'm going to help them because I have to believe, and this is, this might be the Pollyanna in me, right? But I have to believe that that pastor regrets that every day of his life. I have to believe that because, you know, like I try for a moment to remove myself and please don't, I know that you know me well enough. So anybody in the audience, please know that I try and remove myself from a moment and say, you know, that I feel for him. I feel sorry for him because he was so scared that he wouldn't stand up and step out for what he believed in, that he couldn't embrace the truth, no matter what that meant. We cannot allow children to be abused. We can't, we can't allow it that this it's just it's not okay. And the fact that you went through it, like I said, if I could take it from you, my friend, I, I would take it. I would take it. I would take it. And I can't. And it hurts my heart. And I'm trying really hard not to cry because there's victory in what you're sharing, right? There's, there's so much victory that it doesn't deserve my tears, but my compassion for you as a person deserves my grief and me sharing, you know, that with you. So, you know, if you don't mind, and, and honestly, th there's so many great comments, Stacey, I gotta, just got to share. Vicki is, you know, shocked, of course. Uh, Raymond is saying, you know, Jesus is the healer. Um, I hope, And Jen says, I hope he simply didn't know what to do with that information. It has to haunt him because it, it has to. And, you know, Vicki Hummer is like, it's a pastor. Wow. But we don't want to, and, you know, Stacey's point here is not that you guys would now be mad at pastors, right? It's just, that's not why she's here. She's here to help encourage you because her story does get worse. I'm going to be honest, but the, the road of victory is amazing. She has done an amazing job. So, so Stacy, if you're okay with us talking a little bit more, I mean, you know, you shared, you shared what your uncle was doing. You shared, you know, that he obviously had no regard for other people and their, their innocence and, and who they were. You're, when your mom separated from him, there was a time when this information did come to light, right? Yeah, actually, um, let, let me tell you, the, the pastor, I found out many years later that the pastor's wife had been molested, and so he just couldn't deal with it. So I, as an adult, I understand um, and I want you to know that I actually went to the high school counselor, and Gladys was the counselor's name, uh, and um, I wrote a note, and on the note, because I, I wrote the note, on the, I wrote the note, I said, I'm being molested, I need help, I gave it to the counselor. They called the police, uh, my uncle, they, they came out, they arrested my uncle, and uh, they they threw him in jail and they asked me, they, they had me, they, they interrogated me, let's just put it that way. And I was able to tell them that he had documented everything over the period of my life, that he took pictures of me, that today I'm really glad that the internet wasn't around because they would be child porn. Um, and he was basically thrown in jail and he was given a, a 25 year sentence. That was until my mom forced me to recant. Right. This is where, and that's where the, this is where the betrayal comes in to where it's not just the abuse because, and I know that there's people in the audience here and you guys do me a favor. If you guys haven't shared this out yet, I realize that this content is not as, as G rated, right. As that we, as, as our normal content, 
but I bet you, you know someone, even if you don't know that, know that this is true about them that's, that's been molested. I bet you know a child that grew up with that bully in their head. I bet you do know someone. So I would really appreciate it if you'd share this out because this is a story that people need to know. They need to know they're not alone. They need to know that there's some place to reach out. And because Stacy happens to be, you know, do biblical counseling, this is a perfect opportunity for people to reach out to someone who's already been there and done that and, and give them a chance to, to start the healing. Stacy had to go through so much more strength and so many more things just to get there. So again, share it out and make sure that, that other people know, because we don't, I, I'm sure you guys are feeling her pain. We don't want other people to feel this pain either. We want someone else to have the courage to write this note and say, I'm being molested. Please help me because it's hard to spit the words out, right? Stacy, it was easier to write it on a piece of paper than look at somebody, say the words, because then you're somehow receiving them. So, you know, your mother made you recant, which sickens me to death. Right. Well, yeah. And, and just so people know, you know, both my mom and my uncle are dead. They're, they're both dead. And that, that there's, I'll, I'll fill in some of that in a second. But, um, but yeah, the recanting was the hard thing because I remember, you know, I remember keeping in mind about 14 at the time, which now I look back and I go, oh my gosh, that was just the baby, you know? Uh, that was just, I mean, how the hell did I even get through that, right? I mean, seriously. Mm-hmm. But that's where God came into my life because I remember going into my room at night and just praying and saying, Lord, if you, if you get these charges dropped, then I will serve you the rest of my life. And now I find that prayer a little, a little, a little it's like the cry of a girl, right? Because I don't know. But I went in and they interrogated me. And the cop knew I was lying. And he said to me, I know you're lying. And lying I said, about the recanting. And we want yeah, to make sure this is clear lying. that she's yeah. saying she lied about the recanting. Cause because you didn't right. explain that, Stacey, that your mother put pressure on you and she threatened, threatened you. Yeah, so she stop. threatened to kill me. Right. Yeah. She threatened to kill me if I didn't recant. Mm-hmm. And so what are you gonna what would you do? <laughs> you know, on the one hand, my molester is threatening to kill me if I told anybody. But I have an evil mother who didn't want me and who was telling me to recant. And, you know, so I turned to God and I asked him that. And then the, the officers in there, you know, I remember so vividly that I was, I was sitting in there and the officer was telling me, I know you're lying. He said, your lips are dry. Your, your, your mouth is dry. You're lying. It's very clear that you're lying. And of course they knew I was lying because they had all the evidence. I mean, they, they did. That's how my uncle was able to get like 25 years but as it turned out um because i did recant in the state of california a victim that recants they can't do anything their hands are tied and so it's kind of like well you know what do you do and and to my mom's credit i will say after i recanted she made sure my uncle never had anything to do with me after that So I can tell you honestly that she actually did that. And of course, I know as an adult that she knew she would have been majorly implicated. And her excuse to me was she wanted me to recant so I didn't have to take the stand. Mm -hmm. And and you didn't believe that? No, of course not. Even at 14. But did you you find yourself wanting to believe that, Stacey, because the pain was so great? Maybe. Yeah, because, you know... You're, the person that's been giving you gifts is now, you know, he was sleeping with your mother. He's, you know, he was molesting you. He's giving you gifts. He's, he's painted this picture of this, you know, a family unit that is so obscure and so, you know, it, it, it was so skewed that as a young girl, the fact that you've come through what you've come through and become the woman you've become today is, it's a miracle already. So the fact that Christ you know, you found Christ and gave your life to him, you know, and, and, and still traversed these things. Like I said, you know, your mother threatening to kill you puts, um, you know, is a whole nother line of bullies in your head that wait, this woman who bore me, who, you know, took care of me is supposed to be my protector is, is now threatening to actually kill me to protect the person who harmed me. And, and so that, 
that in itself gets so, as Randall put it, it's twisted, right? It's sick. Relentless Raymond says, you know, it is a huge mess, but a powerful story of hope. And Vicky, you know, saying, oh my gosh, the officers must have been so frustrated because like you said, you, they know you're lying. They can't do anything about it. The person that's supposed to protect you isn't. And, and this happens. This is not, you know, an isolated incident that, that you're the only one that's ever happened to. So the fact that you kept, like I said, you chose, Stacey, you chose to, to live a life of hope and you chose to live a life that, you know, continues working on other people. Now, I know that, you know, through this recanting process, there were some other things that went on in, in terms of your relationships and different things. So, you know, are you okay with sharing some of those things with them as well? Sure. Um, you know, after that, that took place, uh, my 16th birthday, as I said earlier, um, my uncle's goal was to vaginally rape me on my birthday, which happens to be Sunday, by the way. So this time of year always has some irritating memories associated with it. Um, but he didn't. But my mom's birthday gift to me was a negligee on my 16th birthday, which, which just tells you, again, how twisted my mom was. And uh, I have to say that um, I, uh, I did everything I could to move out at 18. Uh, when I moved out at 18, I was finally able to go to church on my own, which was really cool because I, bef before I was like kind of, you know, not, I had to read the Bible in secret. My, you know, I mean, my mom just didn't like me. She didn't, she just, you know, I had no life. I was in, in a prison basically. So I moved out when I was 18, started going to church. I went to a church where the pastor hooked me up with a lady who had recovered from her sexual abuse history it turned out that she was married to a cocaine addict and she had a past as a lesbian. And at one point uh, I ended up kissing her because we, we were both feeling vulnerable, but you know, she was eight years older than me. She leaned in to kiss me. And so that really messed with my head because then I thought I was gay. And that really freaked me out to be honest. And I'm very passionate about this homosexual issue because of this, I understand it. I have, that all the criteria a person needs who struggles with same-sex attraction. And I want you to know that I actually don't st struggle with that now, and I haven't for like decades. But at that point in my life, in my early 20s at this point, it freaked me out enough to where eventually I went into therapy. And um, the therapist, uh, her name was Rachel, that I first saw, one of the very first questions she asked me is, well, why are you here? And I said, well, because I was, you know, I, I, I thought I was gay because I kissed this lady and, you know, and she said, well, can you tell me about your life? And she was the first person that wanted to know anything about my life. And so I started sharing with her my sexual abuse history. And then she, from there, it just led into, you know, my mom and the issues with my mom. And I began to understand by the third session, I understood why my feelings were all screwed up that way. Uh, she helped me with boundaries. She she taught me, and she helped me to understand that what I wanted was a mom to love me and protect me, and um, and so for that couple of years in therapy with this woman, um, it it was amazing. It was like all of a sudden I existed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't an object anymore. Because I can tell you, as That's somebody, important. That's yeah. Really important. And, and I have to say that that therapist ended up hurt me really bad. But I will say that um, that one thing that she did was she filed for victim witness assistance in the state of California because the state of California has a victim witness assistance program. And because she, she, because I had turned my uncle in and there was an actual report on him, I was able to get victim witness assistance and the state of California awarded me $10,000. So, you know, and, and, I know that that $10,000 didn't mean anything to you, but what it meant was somebody's acknowledging my pain. Someone's acknowledging I, that I was harmed, that I was wronged, and that the people that were supposed to protect me didn't protect me. And, you know, because I know you, and like I said, that's, it's, it, it can sound trite to other people, you know, oh, and, oh, and she got 10 grand for it, you know, it's, it's not about the money. It's about, you know, and then that probably barely covered all the, the therapy bills and things that need it, to happen. All, you know, It all went to therapy. Every, yeah. I never actually saw it. It all went to my therapist. Yeah. And Literally. that's, 
Well, and, and Stacy, like I said, this is, it's traumatic and it's awful that these things are, and like I said, they build such strong barriers. They, they, they start creating triggers inside of us that, you know, can um, affect our relationships forever. You know, they can affect the way you talk to people, the way you see things. And, and like you said, the confusion of then being in a vulnerable place, because when we're vulnerable and you know, from having the background you do, when we're vulnerable, we, we let that guard down. We're so, you know, we're human and we want to connect with someone at a deep level. We want someone to get us. And so it's understandable that things can happen and that's, and, and get, and it can get confusing, you know? And so I just want you to know that, you know, I stand beside you that, you know, that those challenges and trials and, and the, the people that will come out of the woodwork and start to tell you that you, you know, that you are a lesbian, that you got this, that I will stand beside you and I will be there for you, that you don't have to accept that, that that bully doesn't have to be, you know, big and bad. That bully can get a fit slap <laughs> and you know how effective that can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, there, like I said, there's so many things to that, that story. And, and, you know, we certainly could go on and on, but no. what I think we would do, and I'll let you certainly add in any details that you want to, but this also then created some depression in your life, you know, whether it was at that time, later, a combination of all, you know, I wonder if you could share that piece with us about, you know, how that affected you and how it affect your relationships from then on. Well, sure. Actually, you know, after I started therapy, um, I, I started working on Focus on the Family, which many of you probably have heard of. Um, and there was a day there that I had a meltdown and my therapist called and she had me committed to a, a, a secular mental hospital. And you talk about feeling depressed and freaked out like you're a weirdo or whatever, you know, all of a sudden being thrown into a mental hospital because you were overwhelmed, essentially. Uh, is it's it's quite the thing and let me just say that um again it's one of these experiences that i that i went through and i have to, i have to tell you that um that i look back and i'm i'm happy about it because if i had never gone through that experience um and the different experiences that i had that happened after that like after i got out a short time after that, I met Randall, my husband, and then right after I met Randall, I, I was just seeing a new therapist who, one that didn't hurt me, because that's a whole nother story I won't even get into, but but right after I got married to Randall, I knew the sexual issues were going to come up. I was angry, and my therapist at the time, uh, Randall and I talked about it, and uh, like literally two months after I got married, um, I committed myself to three weeks in the Minerth Meyer Clinic, which is a Christian hospital in-house therapy program. And when I was in there, the psychiatrist said to me that I had to be on medication. And they put, they, they, they literally forced me on antidepressants, which after I got out of the hospital program and, and then got slapped with a bill that I didn't expect because the insurance lied to me about it. And that's a whole nother story. I mean, you guys, I'm not kidding you. This is my life, really. I mean, just like one thing after another. But I look back and I go, okay, I started talking to my therapist afterwards, after I was on all this medicine, and she's like, you know what, you're really depressed, you should probably go on antidepressants. And I said, I'm, all, I'm already on antidepressants. They didn't tell you? And she's like, no, she was so mad. And But I tell you what, being on the medication, I believe to this day actually made it worse. And um, it was probably a journey of 12 to 15 years of me being in therapy and on medication until eventually come up to the, about 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago, when my health got really bad. Um, and, you know, obviously Randall and I wanted to have, have kids, but I couldn't have them because not only did the sexual abuse impact that area in my life, which I won't go into, I think it's self-explanatory, but the medication screwed my health up. And so I ended up having to have a hysterectomy, which broke my heart. But I also went off all my medication at the same time. And it was right after all of that, that I was like, okay, this is it. You know, I went through years of panic attacks, agoraphobia, post-traumatic stress, flashbacks, all this stuff in this, this period of time. Um, and, and then I went off medication and got into grad school. 
<laughs> True story. <laughs> I'm ready now to help the world because I'm in grad school and off medication, just so you know. And then <laughs> I get in grad school and my mom gets cancer and then she dies. <laughs> mm. So it's like the irony of it all. And I'm not laughing because it's funny. It's just funny because when you think that you've overcome something, there's always something there to try to, you know, whap you down a little bit. But, you know, for almost eight years now, I've been off medication and, um, and I have not been happier since. Well, and that's, that's what we're really trying to share with people. Not certainly not judging people that are on medication. Some people need it. And, and like you said, some people are, they start on it because the hospital or, or someone says, or someone doesn't want to deal with you. They don't want to deal with your emotions. They don't want to deal with something. And so if they throw some medication at you, then, you know, then they can sedate you or, or, you know, change who you are, you know, and they, I find that a lot of times <coughs> with kids with learning disabilities, you know, with ADD, kids on the spectrum, like my son has Asperger's and, you know, he also has ADD and people want to medicate him. I mean, the minute they see that the kids got too much energy, they want to throw some medication at them. And I'm not saying that some don't need it. I'm not saying some depressed people don't need it. Everybody has to choose. But what your, your journey has been is that the, you know, the, when people start working with you, when people start talking, when they start extracting the information and letting you process it, that for you, that was the therapy you needed. That's the way it wasn't the medication that was helping as much as, as being able to, to deal with those issues. And, and again, the fact that you've come through that, it, you know, you, and you chose to become an author and write a book called five successful ways to stay depressed. Right. And we have a little uh, video, I mean, a little um, picture of that. So if you guys, have not experienced yet. I'd love for you guys to go to Amazon and uh, pick up Stacy's book, Five Successful Ways to Stay Depressed. It's a very cute book. It's funny. It is um, meant to uh, get you, you know, focused on not being depressed, just so you know, <laughs> and uh, to encourage you and give you something to hope for. So she's taken that and she redirected it and she chose to become an author. So you know, Stacy, I love that. And you know, I just wonder, like, how did it feel when you you wrote that book? What were you thinking? Do you want the truth? Well, I no, actually wrote you it. I prefer that you lie to us <laughs> because you've been so transparent for the rest of the interview. You should start lying now. That'll really help. I wrote it as a joke. Sure. And, and what's really funny is that I was reading this marketing material and it basically said um, you should set aside two hours and you should write whatever in two hours and then put it up on Amazon. And so I did, and I was in one of my moods that where I was making fun of everything. And basically it's, you know, it's basically what people tell you to do so you're not depressed. But the point is, is people never do that. I mean, don't go to a therapist and, and not listen to them. And so how did it feel? It felt funny. And actually really what happened was my friend Jennifer, Dr. Jennifer Fee, as we know, she was my uh, cognitive behavioral uh, teacher in graduate school. That's where I met her. And she was the first one to write a review for it and to buy it. Mm -hmm. And when she did that and she put five stars and wrote about it, it just, it just, it made, I was so proud. I was just so proud, you know, and it was just so cool. And so it tickled me to the bone, actually. The, the very fact that something that I thought was supposed to be funny actually has helped quite a few people it makes me laugh. Well, and that's the, that's about this evict the bully in your head thing that we're talking about and why we have this show, because those kind of things do help to evict the bully. You know, I always say, you know, bullies start out as tiny babies. We don't incur, we don't invite this 350 pound gargantuan scary thing into our lives to scare the crap out of us. It comes out, yeah, tiny baby. This is so, oh, oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. And then we feed it. We clothe it, we house it, and we, and, we, and we allow it to continue to grow. We even encourage its growth. And then we wonder why we're, you know, why we're so afraid and why we withdraw and why we let them to berate us and beat us up every day. And so you know, the fact is, is that you writing that book, you getting that review makes the bully just a little bit less intimidating, makes it a little. And so we said, I don't need to listen to you today. I don't need to listen to what you say today. You know, and Stacey Baroka says, look at that smile still on your face about it. You know, you talk about it, tin foil to steel. That's great. <laughs> Stacey, <laughs> that is funny. If you guys don't know what she's talking about, I wrote a blog post the other day when your knight in shining armor shows up in a tin foil suit. So if you guys want to read that, you can go to vickyfitch.com slash knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. Um, Relentless Raven says, Stacy's awesome example of what the power and will can do and believing in Jesus Christ, 100% change and uh, you're awesome and successful. And Randall, of course, 
said, major surgery, going off meds, grad school, and mom with cancer simultaneously. I'm still amazed she triumphed. And wow, didn't he get a treat getting to choose you as a life partner, Stacey? You know, you 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 go through, and, and nobody knows how much more depth there is to that story, but the fact that we sprinkled that on them, you know, sprinkled it on them to give them, you know, an idea, right? Take them a little bit through that journey and then give them the hope because that's who you are. And, and, you know, you, you got saved and you have, you know, made it your life's mission to share the gospel unapologetically, you know, um, you can be a little in your face sometimes, you know, you gotta, you stand up, that bully don't stand a, a chance against you if we're talking about faith because you are there and you are relentless in your quest to be honest and to have truth. And, and I know myself and I know many people that are in this room watching right now. And by the way, I, I, I apologize. I have not even addressed our, um, our viewers that have downloaded this or our, our audio listeners from the podcast, those of you guys who downloaded this on iTunes, Stitcher, um, Spreaker, wherever you got it from, thank you so much for the download. If you'd like to see, this is episode eight of uh, Vicki Fitch Live, Evict the Bully in Your Head. It will be on YouTube. It's also on facebooklive.com. Uh, I mean, facebook.com slash Vicki Fitch one. And we would love for you to come and see the hope that Miss Stacey Lynn Harp, that smile on her face, the rosy cheeks that she has, and the way that she, when you look at her, you know that that this is a woman that's got a message that's going to encourage you. I'd also like to thank the team at Enlightened Audiovisual who has put this whole event together and, and they do an amazing job. So if you guys have not seen it for sure, come check it out. And then, you know, if you guys are interested in, in leveling up your game and stepping up and showing people that you've got something inside you that's worth delivering, definitely connect with them. Um, you know, we got Sam Gonzalez, we've got Rob Hicks, Jenny Q, Jeff Adams, Jeff Fitzgerald, again, an amazing, amazing crew of people. So thank you guys so much for that. So Stacy, let's get back to you and, and, and real quick and, you know, you you have a little caption, right? You know, Bible News Radio, and you're the sweet and lovable host. So I just love to know where did the sweet and lovable host come from? Somebody said it to me, and I don't know. I don't even remember who it was. But one of my listener listeners have a way of of picking out what you say all the time, and 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 then they they call you stuff. <laughs> so I was like, sweet and lovable. I like that. I'll keep that. Yeah, there you go. Hey, if somebody calls me sweet and lovable, I'm in. I'm I'm going for that. When they call me beautiful, I'm like, thank you, because you know that's all right. Well, any woman will take that, right? We will take compliments because there's enough garbage out in the world that we want to accept compliments. We want to we want to embrace them. And like I said, that just that th those little key phrases in themselves are really pleasant and uplifting. And and you know uh, you know I know that you had mentioned that you used to work on fo uh, focus on the family. You also did a bunch of stuff at um, Voice of the Martyrs as well. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and your journey of getting there? Because again, it shows you know, that story of how you started working kind of in, in Bible News Radio and in the industry, again, shows the, your courage and that, you know, you, you don't, when you think you want to do something, then you go for it. You don't allow um, the possibilities to kick you to the curb. You say, um, no, I am Stacy Lynn Harp and I am here and you will listen. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny because how I even started Bible News Radio, which is what I call it now. At the time, I called it Mind and Media, and then I changed the name to Active Christian Media primarily because it started with an A, and I was thinking I was getting, you know, the phone book with an A. Um, but the truth is that um, I, I had this great idea to do book reviews. I was contacted by this guy named, I, don't, I forgot his name, but he worked for the, the Chronicles of Narnia movie. I'd started blogging. And he found my blog, which was nothing but rants about political stuff and, and stuff. And, and he's like, hey, I'm working on the Chronicles of Narnia movie. And I was wondering if you would like to advertise for the Ronald Reagan in the Face of Evil DVD. We'll pay you. And I was in grad school at the point at that time. And I thought, money. I could get money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And he invited me to the National Religious Broadcasters Convention to hang out at the Chronicles of Narnia booth. And to make a very long story short, when I went there, he actually reneged on it. And he's like, no, I'm taking that back. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I'm going down there anyway. <laughs> so I went down and I hung out for a couple hours until finally two really nice Christian ministries. They gave me a free pass to the expo. I go into the expo. I pitched the idea to the Christian publishers to do blog for books. 
they bought the idea. I came home, got a business license and basically went into business. But at the same time that happened, my friend Paul, who used, who was uh, working with the American Family Association at the time, he was reading my daily emails because I, I had an email list called E Involved, which stand, it stood for email involved. It, again, it had to do with activism. And Paul was reading my email, and at the end of every email, I always put a prayer request in for the Voice of the Martyrs that they had. Well, Paul, being a new blogger and a visionary, had the idea that ministries could benefit from blogging. And so his idea was to pitch Voice of the Martyrs, the idea of a blog. And so he pitched them that idea, and then he came to me and he said, would you like to be the contract blogger for Voice of the Martyrs? And I said, well, what do I have to do? And how much will you pay me? He said, I'll give you $600 a month, and, and I'll pitch everything. I'll set it all up, and all you'll have to do is write it. So he pitched it. BOM took it. Uh, I made 600 bucks a month writing about Christian persecution. And then a year later, Paul handed me the contract. I upped it to, you know, to 1400 a month. Uh, and to make a long story short, that contract lasted for eight years. And uh, I ended up writing about Christian persecution, becoming an expert in it at the same time I was in clinical therapy. So it's a very unique, weird background that I have. But um, yesterday on my show, I actually got to interview Miriam Ibrahim, who was a persecuted Christian in the Sudan. Uh, and so for me, having written about Christian persecution, getting to actually interview a miracle today. I mean, yesterday was just totally cool. Mm. So that's how that happened. So it all happened at the same time, which is kind of weird. But. Well, and I don't know that it's weird. I think that's God, right? Is that you have this, you know, it's kind of like when you're going through the valley, right? We've got this, you know, this time and, and, and the Bible is very clear about the things that are going to happen, right? But we have an opportunity to walk through, you know, you know, though we walk through the valley of shadow of death, you know, we need to fear no evil and that we just need to keep on going up. But there are days we don't feel like going on. There are days that we don't feel like walking. We don't feel like getting up that we feel like if one more thing happens to me, I won't be able to move. Right. And, and that overwhelm. And I, I imagine being a persecuted Christian in a, especially in a foreign country would be, you know, as traumatic as, as it gets. And so the fact that you got to be there and be the one that was writing about it and trying to share with the world, the, the, the people, you know, third world problems, right? First world problems. The first world problem is our, you know, oh, my internet's slow. You know, third world problem is a totally different situation. And yet you got to be that bridge. You got to share what was going on with them. And, and it softened your heart even more towards what was going on. And, and so God just continued to open those doors and to use it and give you the opening that you needed to, you know, like I said, and what a courageous spirit, like you're, Oh, you're going to renege on those tickets. Most people would totally <laughs> just be like, you know, of course I can't, there's nothing I can do about this, you know? And, and yet you were like, I, no way I'm not giving up. I mean, Somebody, so I got an idea and it's a good one and I'm going to let somebody know about it and somebody's going to listen and guess what they did. And, yeah. and you are, you know, you continue to be that kind of spirit to this day. You continue to set goals and achieve those goals. And, and, you know, th there's still a bully in your head and yet you continue to persevere. You continue to pursue uh, righteousness and goodness and, and to extend yourself in a way that, um, you know, can be really vulnerable and can be, um, you know, can even be heartbreaking. Like you said, people have hurt you. Counselors have hurt you. People have hurt you. And, um, you know, so I don't know if there's some pieces of those things that you want to share that, that maybe put on your heart that, um, you know, how you might be able to bless somebody, how you might be able to, um, you know, encourage somebody that might be struggling, whether they're being persecuted or whether they're, they're persecuting themselves, the bully in their heads, persecuting them. And they don't feel good enough, strong enough, smart enough, secure enough, stable enough, you know, sinless enough because let's face it we're all a bunch of dirty rotten sinners so you know we all we all fall short of the glory of god so what what advice or, or hope would you like to deliver to people well first of all thank you and you know that this last year with you in my life it's it's you've you've helped me out more than most people know and i consider you one of my closest friends and i love you dearly and you know that i torture you every day <laughs> but that's part of my job. So somebody has to do it, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I really, I, I would have to say no. Somebody doesn't have to do it. But if you insist, you know, I, I guess it's good that it's you. I'm not sure. 
Yeah. What I would say in all seriousness is I would say, you know, I look, I look back at my life and I actually kind of laugh a little bit because I, I was really persecuted, you know, growing up. And when I became a Christian, I was persecuted. So I always saw that, that line, you know, not to the same degree that Miriam was or Pastor Saeed or Asiya Bibi or others, but it, it's, it goes back to something that the Lord really showed me. And, and it's maybe it'll make somebody think. The Bible talks about how humanity, how man is made in God's image. We're the only creation made in his image. We're the only one. The animals aren't made in his image. The fishes aren't. The trees, the, you know, the, the earth isn't. Only man is, mankind. And there is a real war. There is a devil. And there is God. And the real war is that the devil doesn't like us. The devil doesn't like you because you're made in God's image. And he, his role is he's a liar. And his role is to come to kill, steal, and destroy. So anything that happens to you, whether it's, you know, somebody abuses you or, <clears throat> or whatever, you know, the bad things that happen, the devil doesn't like you. He wants to kill you. So anybody that comes after you or anything that happens to you that fits into these categories, whether it's he comes to kill you, literally, to, to kill, steal, steal your joy, steal your innocence, and all that. Uh, and, and destroy you. A lot of people are destroyed. I mean, literally. And I, I really believe God protected me from the one thing that I think would have probably destroyed me at some point, which I've already shared. But my encouragement is to realize that God made you. He created you. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. There's nobody like you. Uh, Psalm 139 tells you that. And you have to hold on to that. You have to hold on to that truth because the devil doesn't like you. Mm -hmm. And his job is to destroy you because the very imprint of God is on you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, people like to equate today humans with animals. I'm sorry, that's not, that's not reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my dog doesn't cook me dinner. You know what I'm saying? As much as I love my dogs, they're not humans. Mm -hmm. they, they can't pay my bills or any of that. Mm -hmm. So the very image of God is constantly being attacked in people. And we see it and bore out in our culture through abortion, through homosexuality, through the destruction of marriage, the way God defined it. I mean, it's all over our culture. Mm -hmm. um, and so my hope, you know, my encouragement would be to realize you're made in his image. You're made in his image, his image, not your image, not your mom, dad's image, not your puppy dog's image, God's image. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that makes you more valuable than anything. And Jesus died for that. He died for you because he made you in his image and he loves you that much. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, that's, it's so, it's such a powerful thing when people think someone believes in them, when someone trusts them, when someone has their back, when someone, you know, we look for these earthly, you know, we look for people here on earth to be our best friend. You know, we look for somebody that gets us, right? That we just want to swallow them up. Like, okay, stay close because, you know, we need somebody. And, and the Bible tells us there's no friend closer than Jesus and that he, you know, because I can, you know, some of you that know me, right, have seen, um, have seen the opportunity of, you know, me having, you know, sharing a lot of personal stuff, right. And feeling like, um, you know, <laughs> feeling like I got a lot going on. Right. And, and just kind of, ex you know, exposing and, and going with, and, and you know what, but the one person, the one that never has left me is Jesus and that we do start to not trust other people. We do, you know, we, it's easy to put the walls up and say, you know what, I'm going to just stay back here because, you know, I just don't really trust you. I don't trust men. I don't trust, you know, mothers. I don't trust, you know, people with dark hair that, and a mustache, whatever it is that those situations that get put together, we start to to really, you know, put up barriers. And so, you know, the fact is, is that you chose even, you know, you chose to keep your barriers down and you still chose to, to stay soft. I'm not saying you don't have any um, boundaries, but you chose to stay soft and you chose to help other people because I've seen your heart on your show and I've seen it on your, you know, and Bible News Radio, I've seen it on your periscopes that you're, you know, when people are hurting, you know, you want to go to their defense. I mean, you've, you've come to my defense before, you know, when people hurt people that you love and it just shows the compassion that's, that's part of who you are. And that heart, that is the one where people need to look out. So if you guys aren't 
um, if you're not following Stacey Lynn Harp or, and Bible News Radio on Twitter and Facebook, you guys need to. She has that show. They have a show every day. I'm going to let Stacey tell you about it in a minute, but every day that they're delivering value, they're delivering information. And even if you're not a Christian, I encourage you to listen because you're okay. it's okay for you to have a contrary point of view. It's okay for you to not agree. But the good thing is, is that Stacy's not going to attack you for not agreeing. She'll give you information that you can, what I call weigh with your own. You know, I always tell people, don't take what other people say for granted. Like, oh, oh yeah, well, Joe said it, Mary said it, Vicki said it, you know, Joanne, Jimmy said it, whatever. Don't take what people say, weigh it with what you know and, and start to formulate your own opinions. So listen in because some of the topics are amazing. Finding out people have been persecuted, you know, um, you know, those people are persecuted. You probably, I imagine you have some compassion for them, whether or not you agree with their beliefs. I imagine you still have some compassion because, you know, you might like to drink beer. And what if that was persecuted? You're like, well, wait a minute, everybody, you know, people do that all the time. Well, what if they didn't? What if, what if it was, you know, soda or diet soda or, you know, whatever that you were persecuted for something that you believed it wasn't harming anybody else, but you were persecuted for it. And that people threw you in jail for it. I mean, just imagine picture this because People, oh, well, that's over there on the other side of the world. But imagine if you were being persecuted here for something that was none of anybody else's business, that, you know, your faith, your choice of beverage, those things, that, that's really hard. And you guys got to look at those things and say, wow, this is, this is heavier. You know, there's a, a Christian song and he talks about, you know, my own little world, you know, that there's, a, I'm in my own little, it's only me. And then, oh, now there's population too, because I just saw this woman and I realized she's homeless. And then all of a sudden he's, he's, you know, growing and starting to see people as people and not just in a selfish way. And that's what I think that you can get from Bible News Radio. So, um, you know, Stacy, you know that I uh, adore you and I think that you are delivering a great message. I think Randall's an amazing man. And uh, the two of you as a couple have brought a lot of value to the community on live streaming as well as uh, radio and, and those kind of things. And, um, you know, there's a, a rumor around that you've also brought a lot of value into a new sport called pickleball. So <laughs> we would love to hear about your pickleball escapades that go on daily. And I'd love to hear about that and kind of bring this as we start to wrap it up and bring it to a light <laughs> note so we can, uh, so everybody can remember the jovial Stacey Lynn Harp instead of just and we don't want them defining you by what's gone on in your past we want them to see you in your present you know it's interesting you should bring that up i gotta tell you something i really actually have to tell you something that i connected earlier today when i was in high school going through all this stuff you know what i did i played tennis and i had one of those balls with it was a tennis ball on a rubber string and i went and i would hit that thing for hours in the street i would hit it i would hit it uh, and so I, I love tennis, right? But uh, so, and I played tennis, I won one tournament in first place, and that, that will reign in my mind forever. <laughs> but anyway, recently I discovered pickleball. It was like earlier this year, about in the middle of the year. And pickleball is actually um, uh, very popular all over the world. And it's, it's, it's really popular with older people, especially the retired community. Um, and kids, a lot of kids, Play it, but a lot of people around here where I live actually play it in the morning. Um, and so it's like tennis. It's on a smaller court. It's played with a wiffle ball and a paddle, not an actual racket. And I, I like to play four times a week for two or three hours at a time because I just, you know, if it wasn't for work, I would be longer. But, you know, anyway. I love that. I mean, it's fun. Fact, yeah. And you know what? We should have fun and, and we should exercise and we should community, you know, have a community of people that we can connect with and, and, you know, learn and grow from. And, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, looking for new opportunities to meet people. And, and again, when people see that face of yours and those <laughs> rosy cheeks and that giggle, I mean, they can't help but want to connect and find out about you. They would have no idea of what you've gone through. They would have no idea and they probably will find themselves, some people that are really hurting would be judging you saying, oh, her life's so perfect. You know, she's so, she's so fantastic because they don't know what's underneath. So the fact that you chose to come here and share so people could be rejuvenated and revitalized and have hope. Cause you know, you know, they call me the hope dealer, right? It's cause hope is, is something that we all crave we all desperately need because that's that's the only thing we have right is is hope 
right? And hope. And you, not only did you have hope, but you deliver hope to other people and you give them, you know, an opportunity to, for that courageousness and the courage. And so, you know, I, I just wonder if you, you know, have some words of wisdom or encouragement, whether it's about pickleball, about exercising, about, you know, just being who you are and owning who you are, you know, what advice would you give for people that are struggling right now with, um, with sexual abuse or, you know, that things that they're hiding, things that um, they're embarrassed about, you know, what would you say to them to try and try and give them hope? That's a good question. Um, basically, I would, I would, there's so many questions you asked there. Uh, for somebody who's struggling, I would say, you know what, just tell some, just tell one person. And, and if that person doesn't listen, like in my case, tell somebody else, because somebody will listen, like Chocolate Johnny always says, you know, somebody's going to listen to you. Um, but understand that recovery is a lifelong process. And, you know, one of the biggest compliments that I get today, for if people didn't know me, they didn't know my background, one of the biggest compliments I have is that people think I have a good background, because I am healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a grad, I have some uh, idiosyncrasies here and there. And I still have bullies in my head occasionally that I have to deal with. But the bottom line is I spent a long time in therapy working through stuff. And it, it didn't just happen overnight. I still struggle with some, some things. And I'm not perfect. But I will say that, you know, one step at a time, right? One day at a time. One little inch by inch at a time. Mm -hmm. and, and you can get through it, you know. And God, and I would, I would say call out on God. Ask God for your for help because the Lord will help you. And I look back and this is the connection that I made when I was in school and being abused. Tennis was a refuge for me. And, you know, and now pickleball brings me so much joy, not because I'm abused now, because I'm not, but it's just different because there's a freedom there. And so, you know, if that's what I would say, and if you're a kid and you're listening to this for some reason, I would definitely, you know, you can call me and I'll defend you. Mm -hmm. um, I went on Fox News and, and I, I called out pedophiles on Google 10 years ago. And so I have no problem standing up to people. Who, who harm kids it's just not well absolutely and and the fact is we'll um we'll drop a link to that uh that uh interview you did on fox news inside the show notes so if you guys haven't seen that we'll make sure that you have access to that because again it takes courage to step up and stand out it takes courage for us to evict the bullies in our head and so you know, like Stacy said, if you're if you're being abused, tell someone. If that person doesn't listen, tell someone else. And you can always contact her at Bible News Radio. Um, you're certainly welcome to contact me. And you know, there you're not alone. And we want that's what we want people to know. You're not alone. That we're here to help. We're here to give hope. And we're here to build a community of people that care. That that are more worried about the 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 person than we are about the ramifications of what might happen, just like you and stepping up and standing out about Google that, you know, about pedophiles and, and man, boy, love and, and how that can harm people and, and what it's delivering. And so, you know, you know, we, we need to make sure, you know, we have about 10 more minutes and we want to make sure that people can uh, connect with you, Stacy. So we'd love for you to share out. Yeah, we will have a social media card at the end that will have all of your links and stuff on it, but we want you to share how the best way to contact you. I mean, are you looking for people on your show? Do, do you have some uh, merchandise? I know I have seen some, uh, I, I didn't wear it tonight, but I, the Bible News Radio shirt, I've seen some Bible News Radio. Are you, well, there it is, Bible News Radio <laughs> mugs. Um, we got some, we got Bible News Radio. I saw in the, in the day, you have a great Facebook group called the Daily Disciples. And, um, you know, you do a nightly Bible study as well to help people. So you, you got some merchandise there. So why don't you tell people how they can connect with you, your business, how they can donate to Bible News Radio and help support your ministry, as well as uh, to pick up some uh, additional, you know, fun wear and, and that kind of stuff. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Well, you know, obviously the best way to get, I mean, my website is BibleNewsRadio.com. Um, probably the easiest way to get a hold of me is through Twitter, though, uh, just because I'm on Twitter all the time, and then we can, we can connect any other time. But I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on uh, Facebook, um, and all that. And, and really, the merchandise, I just have to tell you that Jay Mackey, you know, designed all of that for me. Yeah. And 
uh, he really is a rock star. I'd have to tell you that he, he rocked it and you connected me with him, of course, and you encouraged me as my business coach as well. But, and I have to tell you that it's so cool after 12 years to finally have a brand that I like and people love it everywhere I go. People are like, I love that shirt. And, you know, and so we put up on uh, BibleNewsRadio.com a little link to the store there with new logos. Um, there's one that says sweet and lovable. There's one that says my tagline, be bold, stand up, go with God. Uh, there's one that says, I love you in a non-gay way, <laughs> which don't get mad. If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it. Just so you know, it's supposed to be funny. Like, anyway. Um, and, and we're going to have the daily disciples one too. And, and actually somebody tonight told me that I, I should do a bumper sticker that says, or, um, are you more concerned about your crisis or your Christ? Mm. Mm. Because sometimes people get really, you know, wrapped up in their crisis and they forget Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's just a question. No, it's, and it's good. It's good information. And as we look at those things and like you said, giving people an opportunity to connect with, um, you know, and first of all, you were talking about Jay. Yeah. Jay is the one that actually did the graphics and the illustrations for Evicted Bully in your head. And you guys are going to love it. I, I, you guys give me, my community gives me so much new information all the time that I keep adding new characters. Poor Jay is going to have like, we're going to have 8 million illustrations in there because I'm <laughs> adding more depth to the characters because of the situations and things that come up as I, I do, you know, as you know, I broadcast twice a day on Periscope as well as Facebook live. And, um, you know, I give so much stuff and I get so much feedback. And so it's just, it continues to evolve, but Jay is a rock star and I love that brand. It's, it happens to be the same colors as my brand. So I'm already, uh, you know, I already lean toward it anyway. Then I adore you. I adore Randall and the whole logo thing's adorable. So it's fantastic that you've connected with something that really impassions you and, and makes you feel proud because that's what we're supposed to. And that's when we can see that we're starting to evict the bully, that we no longer accept unacceptable behavior, that we don't allow things to, to um, change our countenance the way we used to. That it doesn't mean we don't hurt. It doesn't mean we don't cry. It doesn't mean we don't feel, but it means that it doesn't derail us to the point where we can't function. And, and again, Stacy, with all that you've been through, it's a miracle that you've come where you are and how you've come. And, and I personally am proud to know you and I really do appreciate all you bring to the community. I appreciate all you bring to my rock star community and to me personally as a friend. So, um, you know, I'm, I really feel privileged that you would share this, this private story with me and, and with the audience here. And, and I hope that you have felt like you had the utmost respect and that, that people were honoring you and valuing you, supporting you and, and just being, um, just feel, being blessed by your willingness to share your testimony. Thank you. You're going to make me cry, you know. That's okay. You're allowed to because we're almost done. And I know. my mascara is still intact, so I feel pretty <laughs> proud of myself. That's all. <laughs> I do, I do want to say thank you. I really do because, you know, I've never shared my story this way with anybody publicly. And there, there would be nobody else I would want to do it with. And so I want to say thank you. I really do appreciate it. Well, it was my honor and my privilege for sure to do that. And, and I, um, I encourage everybody to go out and get your Bible news radio shirt, take a picture, tag it, tag Stacy in it, tag me in it. I tell you what, if you guys do it, anybody who does this and puts their thing, I'm going to do it through the whole month of October. I'm going to pick a winner and I'm going to give them one of my courses. I'm going to give them the rockstar guide to getting it done or seven ways to close more sales with confidence. Um, so you guys do that. You want to order the shirts and you can go to biblenewsradio.com. You guys can click on the link there. You guys get, I don't care if you don't want to share, you get a mug. I don't care if you strut, if you're strutting the Bible news radio logo, then I will put you in a contest to win uh, one of my items, but you have to tag me in it at Vicki underscore Fitch tag Bible news radio, and then, um, and, and make sure that you, let's see what, what, well, you have to use a hashtag. Let's see what hashtag should we use? Pickleball. <laughs> well, I don't know. That could probably, I, I would say somebody needs to look that up. I'm guessing other people are using pickleball. But we could do um, I pickleball bet, bully. <laughs> yeah, pickleball bully is probably not there. I don't know. If you really want to be thinking of you that way because Stacey's 
be a little bit of a pickleball bully. Um, I should have thought of this before, but um, I'll think of I'll think of it for a second, and we'll come up with that. We'll come up with that hashtag, and we'll make sure also to put it in the show notes to make it really easy for you guys. Um, so you know, Stacy, we have uh, we everybody on the show that comes on the show, we have a favorite graphic that we pop up, and you happen to have a Bible verse, so we're gonna pop your favorite Bible verse up there really quick. And uh, I'd like you to tell people really quick why that's your favorite Bible verse and tell them, read it to them. Um, this is Romans 12 too, right? It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. When your mind has been messed with, like mine has, uh, you know, th this is, this verse changed my life. It was actually the very first Bible verse that I was ever read from my friend Gail. And, uh, and it's been interesting to me that that as I've gone through my Christian walk now, which has been about 34 years as a Christian, um, it's the, the word can, don't be conformed to this world, but be transfer, transformed by the renewing of your mind. That, that word transformed actually means to be continually transformed. So it's a continual process. And so, and that's what happens every single day. God transforms your mind and, um, and, and and I just want to say, too, if anybody else there actually has any issues, I do coaching, too. That is that is something that I also do. I don't just do Bible News Radio. I don't do as much coaching, but if the Lord leads you and you want to do coaching with me, then I also do that as well. So. Yeah, and that and that's a good thing to have somebody that that especially can understand issues uh, from a biblical perspective. And so, um, I did look it up while Stacy was talking. And yes, pickleball bully is completely available. So I have a feeling that we won't have too much um, competition with that. So you guys will be using the hashtag pickleball bully uh, tag at Vicky underscore Fitch and at Bible News Radio. Book any of your uh, Bible News Radio gear, and I will give something away uh, on, I guess, November 1st. I have to look at what day that is, but right around there. So we'll, we'll close that off. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wrap the show up. And, and right now, we, I want to remind you of next week's um, uh, Vicki Fitch Live show. I have Mr. Dave Shrine on. Uh, Dave is an amazing guy that I hope that you guys will um, – definitely come you can sign up now because if you guys are following me on twitter or facebook you know that i continually send up the lineup of people that are going to be on the show so on october 12th at that 7 p.m pacific uh, mr dave shrine will be in the house i also have another podcast called he said red said on monday nights and if you guys know that you know i'm on the hunt for he i used to have a very quippy fun you know it's all about witty banter it's about business um and i'm on the hunt for he so if you think you are witty that you have a you have some business background or social media and you can go head to head with red i'd like you to go to he said red said.com and apply for the position of my new he uh, i also have that my next guest is going to be a very exciting because there's a giveaway did you hear me next week's show monday night show there is a giveaway uh aaron roth from archon mounts will be here in the house he is my guest we were going to be we'll be giving something away live on the show which will be fun. And on earlier that day, I will actually be at the Archon Mounts facility doing a giveaway there as well. So we are going to, you know, we're going to, and I'm giving something away on Wednesday, all from Archon and uh, the six week program that we're doing. You guys just need to like those six Facebook pages. You need to, um, and, and then do what each thing goes. There's over $3,000 in prizes. So I hope that you guys will do that. Uh, I hope you'll get invested in the people that sponsor the show and continue to, uh, to be interested there. And if you guys think you'd be a good fit for either Vicky Fitch Live, a fresh perspective, Vicky Fitch Live, a Vic the bully in your head, or he said, Red said, um, there'll be a link in the show notes where you can go and apply uh, to actually be one of the guests on the show. So um, you guys, there has been so much there. And Stacey, we're going to put up your card. Can you tell me if there's any last words before we close the show out? We have about a minute left. Well, I just want to say uh, thank you for letting me be your guest. I I'm very honored and very humbled that you you asked me to come on. It means the world to me that you did. And uh, everybody listening, thank you for listening. Because you know what? You know what validates people that have gone through trauma is when people listen and believe them. Mm. Thank you for believing in me. 
Absolutely. And I really appreciate that. And for those of you guys, again, who are on the podcast, thank you so much for, um, you know, downloading this. Please go check out episode eight of Vicki Fitch Live, A Victim Bully in Your Head. And then let me tell you quickly about me. My name is Vicki Fitch. I am a direct sales expert. I've been in the industry 20 years, top 10 sales and recruiting internationally for more than a decade. I'm also an author, a speaker, and an international business consultant helping you get outside the 5,000 to turn your passion into your profits. So if you want a free consultation, you go to vickifitch.com forward slash 20. And I just want you guys to know that I appreciate each and every one of you. And I want to remind you, like I always do, to dream it, believe it, and achieve it. Ciao.